Hey, well, what's up, CTM students? This is lesson 4.3. Here we go on these pages. Make sure you're copying this stuff down as you see it for full credits by the lecture due date. Here's some new vocabulary for us. We've talked about some different bases. Uh, we, I'm going to refer a lot back to lesson 4.2. There's going to be a lot of connections, a lot of overlap with lesson 4.2. Uh, so this one, there's going to be not really that much new stuff that you're learning. We're just going to practice with other bases, and I'll explain more about what I mean by that as we move on. So we're going to be learning all these different bases. We're going to be using other bases too, but these ones have special names, and they have uh, special duties, you might say, within certain systems, within certain things that we use a lot. I'll talk about what I mean by that in a second as well. And as always, make sure you're following along in your book, using extra examples for additional help with your assignment. So why do I have a picture of a computer over here? Let's let's talk about that a little bit. So I want to define some things first of all. So let's start off with some definitions here. I've got base 2. I want to know what's base 2. Well what's another name for that? You may have heard of binary code before. This is another name for base 2. Another Another base that has a special name, base 8. This is, if you think of an octagon, or if you think of an octopus, they have eight things. Think of that, and that'll help you remember that this is octal. So an octal system uses base 8. And base 16, this one I don't really have a clever way to remember this, unless you just remember the prefixes. Hexa stands for 16. Um, I'm not sure if that's how that matches up with a hexagon because that's 6, but 16, just remember hexadecimal is 16. Um, so hexadecimal there. Why do I have a computer over here? Well, you may not know this. You may, you may not. I think you probably know, maybe not, but you probably know that base 2 binary code, you see ever see like on the Matrix, the movie The Matrix, zeros and ones all flashing by, something like that. They're using binary code with the computers. But actually, all three of these systems get used a lot in computers. So let's write that down. I think that's important to, to know, an important fact to know. We kind of just take computers for granted, I think. Uh, we've grown up in a, a culture where they've just been, they've just been there all the time. Uh, there's this proliferation of technological devices. And we don't really appreciate what's going on inside the computer, what's going on inside there. Uh, all these different systems communicating with each other in these different bases. Uh, pretty amazing, pretty amazing stuff. I'm not a computer scientist or computer programmer by any means, uh, but pretty fascinating stuff, stuff I'd like to learn more about too. So a bit, what is a bit? A bit is a single numeral. And this I'm talking computer stuff now. So a bit is a single numeral like zero or one on a computer. And then what's a byte? I think we're more familiar with with that word. We hear of well back in my day I used to have a five hundred and twelve megabyte hard drive on my computer. Wow, 512 megabytes. Nowadays, that would be like a really bad flash drive. Uh, and then I'm sure in another five years, that will just be ridiculous to even think that anything was less than a, a, a gigabyte at all in, on anything. I'm sure things are just going to keep getting uh, faster and better with technology. That's just the way that seems to work. But a byte is a group of eight bits group of 8 bits. So we have things like megabytes, gigabytes, and now we have computers that are getting into the terabyte range with their hard drive space. Uh, I don't know what the next one is after that, but it keeps going. They, there's more names for stuff. Uh, maybe you could look that up if you're curious enough and uh, let me know what some of those names are past terabyte. So you may have seen this at some point, this abbreviation, this acronym. A S C I I, this code. This stands for, uh, this is, looking in my book, here we go. American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Uh, so there's all these different systems working on your computer. 
and they have to interchange inter information with each other, uh, kind of converting back and forth between these different bases. My, my guess is that certain systems in the computer just work better with certain bases, and then so that's why they use that base instead of all of them using the same. Um, I'm not exactly sure about that. Again, I'm no, no computer scientist or computer programmer, but uh, definitely something I'd like to know more about. So uh, ASCII code in computers represents each character as a byte. And then I'll write EG here, so that means for example, I believe that's Latin for example, I, I don't remember what the E and the G stand for, but for example the character A in binary code on a computer is these eight bits. This byte, in other words, one zero or zero one, excuse me, zero one, zero, 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 one. So a zero and then a one, five more zeros and a one. That's what we have as a a single byte represented uh, by or representing a single character. So I've copied and pasted here the ASCII table here. Um, you don't have to write this down, of course, but just I thought it was pretty interesting that here's the decimal. This is our base 10 normal Hindu Arabic, what we're used to, that kind of thing, that kind of, of uh, number system here going through 127. And then hexadecimal, you'll notice it uses 0 through 9 and then it uses the letters A through F. We're going to see more about that later on. Binary uses just zeros and ones. It just has two different digits. Hexadecimal, it was a base 16, uses 16 different digits in a sense. We're saying A through F are also digits. Uh, and then octal uses just the digits 0 through 1. It's got eight different digits there. If you count, or 0 through 7, sorry. Uh, got eight different digits there. And then all these things represented by different stuff. So here was the A that I was talking about. I know that this one has just seven digits, but it's like there's this 0 right here. They just left it off. Uh, and you can see they just left off the, the zeros over here too. So we have in octal that would be 101, in hexadecimal that would be 41, and our normal decimal that would be 65. So there, there are certain standards with computers uh, so they can communicate back and forth with each other. They generally use these specific characters matching up with these specific codes for, for them. Uh, so let's work through some examples though where we're going to convert a bunch of different things to either base 10, the one we're used to, or convert base 10 to other bases. We're going to start by converting other bases to base 10. So let's do this to begin. We're going to convert 351. That's not 3516. Notice this 6. It's lower. It's a subscript. It's a kind of like a power, but the power goes on top. This goes on the bottom. So it's it's not like a power in that sense. It's a, a lower thing. It's written smaller. It's a subscript. So 351 base 6, that's how we would read that. This is 351 base 6, converting that to base 10. What does that look like? Uh, so I'm going to go back to to this. This was 4.2 if you want to look at those notes and have those out while you're following along or writing your notes here. I think that's a great idea to look at that. But here, wasn't this just base 60, this Babylonian system? And now instead of base 60, we're going to use base 6. So we're going to be multiplying by 1, 6, and 6 squared instead of 160 and 60 squared with base 6 here. So it's essentially no different. It is no different than what we were doing before. So uh, kind of nice. It's almost a review lesson in that sense. But we're going to get practice with all kinds of different bases now. Not, not just the base 60 Babylonian system and not just the base 20 sort of base 20 with that weird 18 thrown in there. Um, we're going to practice all kinds of different bases here. So let's start off writing our positional values. We've got 1, we've got a 6, we've got 6 squared, we've got 6 cubed, we've got 6 to the 4th. This would continue on this way, 6 to the 5th and so on. I'm not going to keep writing that there though. Uh, so what's going to match up with what? Let me write, let me go with, I'll go with green. Uh, 351 base 6. Well what matches up with what here? The 1 is going to match up with this 1 right here. 
and the 5 that's in that second place that's going to match up with 5 here is going to match up with the 6 right here so in a sense kind of like the 1's place and then the 6th place, the 6's place and then we have the 6th squared place comes next so that matches up with the 3 so that's basically how I'm doing this so look back here it's the same sort of thing we had equals and we had 11 times 60 squared 18 times 60 10 times 1 so here we're doing the same sort of thing we're going to say that we have 3 times 6 squared that is what our first positional value is so we have 3 times 6 squared and we have this plus 5 times 6 and we have this plus 1 times 1 so we just need to work this out work this through now you might find a calculator handy for some of this stuff. I'm going to just rewrite this with 6 squared multiplied out. Could I have done that first up here, or could I just take a calculator and multiply that all together? Sure, that'd be totally fine, too. Just make sure your calculator knows the order of operations, or that you do 6 squared first before you would multiply by the 3. So I'm going to rewrite out 5 times 6. I'm going to rewrite out 1 times 1. And then this would be a step that you could probably skip later on, but write it out for now. Uh, we can see a little better in our notes than what was going on originally or how, how that all worked out step by step, our process. So this is 1 times 1, that will be 1. 108 plus 30 plus 1, we can do that all at once and say that's 139. Now, you'll notice I didn't write a little 10 here. If it's base 10, we assume that there's kind of like an invisible 10 here. So if there, if there's no number there, that's kind of what I should say instead. If there's no number there, we are assuming that this number, this numeral is in base 10. If it's a number, a subscript number, then we assume it's that number is the base. Uh, so let's do another example kind of similar to that one. Uh, get more practice. We're going to use a different base this time, not 6, but let's go convert 28. 76 to from base 9 to base 10. Now you'll notice, I'm going to make a little note here, you may want to write something like this down if you don't think you remember this, but this base, the numbers here always have to be less than the base. If I put a 9 in here, that would be a tenth digit. And you're saying there's a tenth digit in base 9 that doesn't work. So these digits all need to be less than the digit right here, or the, the base right here. So just make sure that's always the case. If it's not, you can't really do the problem. It doesn't make sense to do the problem. Uh, so let's write out here again the positional values. What would the positional values be for base 9? Hopefully you're starting to, to get better at this, get good at this. We'd start with the 1. I'm going to work my way backwards. Well, we've got 9, and then we've got 9 squared, and then we've got 9 cubed, and so on. So it's it's the same sort of idea as here. Six squared, six squared, six cubed, six to the fourth. Doing the same sort of thing. Whoops. Yes, that's what I wanted. S same sort of thing here. Uh, this would continue. I'll go to nine to the fourth. I could do nine to the fifth and keep going with that, but I think you get the idea. This keeps going. Fifth, sixth, seventh, and so on. So let's rewrite our number here. Uh, I can use green. I'll use. Try to keep the colors consistent. So we'll go 2876 in base 9. What's matching up with what here? Well, this 1 is matching up with the, the 6 right here. Why don't I use yellow? I'll do that here. This 9 is matching up with the 7 right here. And the 9 squared, that's this third place value, matching up with this third place value there. And 9 to the third, matching up with that place value right there. So now it's just a matter of doing the same thing we did here, plugging the things in. We got our 9 squared instead now. We're going to have a 9 cubed here as well because we have that fourth place value that also would be substituted. Uh, so this now will look like this about 2 times 9 cubed. And I'll say this plus. 8 times 9 squared, we have this plus 7 times 9, and then this plus 6 times 1. 
Now I could work this all out. This would be 729. This would be 81. And then I could do another step in between there. But let's say I understood that. Okay, so two times this, I put that into a calculator. I could go right to this step and say that would end up being 1458. And then this, 8 times 81 is what that would be. 8 times 81 ends up being 648. 7 times 9 is 63. And then 6 times 1 is 6. So notice I just left out that, that middle step there. That's okay to do. I don't have to do this step. I could go right from here to here in this one. And that is what I did. So let's add all these together. And if you do that correctly, you just verify this with a calculator. I remember if you ever catch a mistake here, if you see a mistake, one of my students in this lecture or any of the, the lecture videos, I'm going to give you some bonus points if it is a correct, correctly found mistake. But make sure that uh, you're being careful and, and not telling me something that was actually right. Uh, so let's move on. That sh should be 2175 in base 10. Again, I don't write the 10. If there's no number there, we just assume it's base 10. So a third example, let's do something like this. So convert 3, 5, what the heck, T, E, 0, base 12. We're going to convert this to base 10. So what's going on here with that T and that E? What in the world is that? These are just now new symbols in base 12. We need 12 digits. So these are the base 12 digits. Let's write those digits out. Base 12 digits are the numbers 0, 1. Base 10 has 0 through 9, and so we still have all those. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And then we also have 10 as a digit, but we can't write 10. Let me write it now and then show you why. So what's wrong with that? Well, I just put two different symbols here. This is two digits. And you can only have one digit uh, in your, your system. You can't do two things counting as one. So I need to take this and erase this to represent 10. Since it starts with a T, that's what this goes up with, or this matches up with. And since 11 starts with an E, we're going to use that for that. So this is going to be T and E and this why is that the case or what did that match up with this is T for 10 and this is E for 11 there you go I can spell yay one of these days I'll have to show you my, my students uh, my fifth grade, fifth grade spelling bee champ um, picture. It is pretty ridiculous. Um, sorry, I don't have it here. I know, I know. What a shame. Oh, I'm so disappointed. All right, so base 12 digits. But yeah, I'll have to bring you that fifth grade yearbook in sometime. I was in uh, in recess. I just got out of recess. I had on these these uh, glasses. I was not very happy with. I, I should have picked a different pair of glasses for sure. Um, and my hair was just a mess. I, I looked like a silly little fifth grader. Let's just leave it at that. So positional values now for this are well you've got 12 digits. So you've got 1, you've got 12, you've got 12 squared, you've got 12 cubed, and so on. 12 to the 4th, keep, keep going. So I'll stop at the 4 and just say that keeps going. Uh, this system, I forgot to name this. I was just going to put this under here. This is the duodecimal system. So the duodecimal system. We use the decimal system, base 10, uh, this normally. But this, now we're using the duodecimal system, base 12. So what does this look like? If I match all this up with what I had to start with, let's rewrite that down. So I have 3, 5, a T, an E, and a 0. And this is base 12. So let's see what we got here. So here's this one matching up with the 0 there. I've got my 12 matching up with the E, the 12 squared, matching up with the, the T, 12 cubed, 
maybe five, and it looks like it needed that fourth, or that fifth place, the 12 to the fourth one, for that. Now, this is, is this something you have to do every single time, right, these positional values? No, I think you're going to get good enough at these, I hope you are, that you can just go right to this next step. You wouldn't have to write out the red part, you wouldn't have to write out the blue part here, or the green part. You could just say, okay, this is going to equal, well, I know each position is 1, 12, 12 squared, 12 cubed, 12 to the fourth there. So I would just go 3 times 12 to the fourth. And I would say that's that, plus 5 times 12 cubed. We have t, remember t is representing 10, so we have 10 times 12 squared, and then I've got e is representing 11, so I have 11 times 12, and it looks like I'm going off into the gray here, but that's okay, I have 0 times 1 for that last place. Now again, I could multiply these, these all out, save us some time here though, in the, the lecture video I'll just say I did this in my calculator, so 3 times 12 to the 4th, 12 to the 4th was 20,000. 736 and I multiplied that by 3 and I got 62,208 when I did this simplification for all that. I did 12 cubed in the calculator and multiplied that by 5. 12 cubed is 1,728 times 5 is 8,640. And this next one, this is 144 times 10. Hopefully you know if you multiply a number by 10 you just gotta add a 0 to that. So that's 1,440. This is 132. We should have our times tables memorized up to 12 at least. Uh, so that one I can do in my head pretty quick. And then that's zero. We add all these together. And we're going to get 72,420. This is a base 10 number, so no need to write the, the 10 subscript. If you did, it wouldn't be wrong, but it's just not the, uh, the proper notation. We just leave it out if it's base 10. So let's do another one where, back to the computers now, we, we're going to use one of those bases that uses computers, and we're going to go binary. At first, binary it looks really weird, like how on earth can we change that to a, a base 10 number, but it's actually pretty easy. Uh, no different than what we're doing with these past ones. So let's say we want to convert 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, that's base 2, to base 10. So remember, computers using binary code all the time. It's basically, a 0 is like saying, don't do something, and a 1 is like saying, do something. Uh, so these zeros and 1s are saying, do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, at incredible speeds inside the computer. Um, let's see, to base 10 there. And going unappreciated most of the time. I know I don't appreciate what's going on inside my computer, especially when it's not working properly. Uh, I, I usually start singing Kip's wedding song to LaFonda. Why do you love me? Why do you need me? Why do you love me? Always and forever. I still love technology, but not as much as you, you see. But I still love technology, always and forever, always and forever. Thank you, Kip. Okay, so we have 2 to the 6th power, and that continues going on, on this way. I noticed I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven digits right here, so I put the first seven places down there. And so I'm going to rewrite my my number down here. One, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one. Show you how it matches up. Again, these are the green and blues are steps you can leave out later. But let's do this in the notes for right now, so we understand as well as possible how these things are lining up. So this just goes this. This is going with this one. So each place value higher, you have a one more higher power of two to go along with that. And this goes here and two to the sixth going with that one. Okay. So now I just I'm taking this, I should have 
written a little two down there, so that's base two. And now I'm just taking this and working that all out. So this first place, I've got a one times two to the sixth. And then the next place, I've got a zero times two to the fifth. And then I've got a zero times two to the fourth. And I've got a one times two cubed. I've got a zero times two squared. I've got a one times two, and I've got a one times one. So it looks like a lot, but what's zero times anything? Let's think about that a second. What's gonna happen here? Zero times, I don't care how big that is, that's gonna go away. So is that, and so is that. Zero times anything will be zero. So what I really, all I really need is those four, and I just need to work those out. So what is two to the sixth power? Two to the fifth power, fifth power I know is 32. I know that's gonna be two times bigger than that. Uh, so this one becomes one times 64, or just 64. Two cubed is eight, so eight times one, that's just eight. One times two is two, and that it should be a time sign. That doesn't look very clear. Uh, let me adjust that. So one times one, that'll be different than one plus one. So one times one, we've got plus one here. So we add all these together. We've got 72, 74, 75. So my final answer, this number base two, becomes this number in base 10. And you'll kind of notice the pattern here too, hopefully you've noticed this. The base 10 number, if you started with a smaller base, you should have fewer digits, or you shouldn't have any more digits than what you started with, uh, at least like that. So let's check it out and see that that works. Well, I didn't have any more digits here, but here's the bigger one. So this last digit is a little higher than that one, and they're both in the fifth place, so that, that makes sense to me. It's kind of a way to verify your answer. Uh, to the ninth, so this one should be a little smaller because it's a bigger base, and it is. So that kind of helps me verify that I, I'm pretty sure I did that right. And same thing, same sort of thing here. A smaller base means when you convert it to base ten, that should be a smaller number than that. Uh, let's do some examples now, though. Where well, I didn't want you to see that yet. Okay, you didn't see anything. Um, uh, no, don't, don't you pause? Don't go back. No, just wait. Hold your horses. Uh, convert. Now we're going to go the opposite way. So convert 839 to base 7. Convert 839. Remember, there's no number here, so we assume it's base 10. We're going that to base 7. Uh, so what did we do when we were doing the Babylonian stuff and the Mayan stuff? Well, if it was like this, converting. Um, like we had been there where we're using these bigger bases or the, the new bases and trying to convert to base 10, we were multiplying. But if we were trying to convert base 10 back to this system, what were we doing? We were, that's like this one, we were dividing. We we're doing the same thing here. So it's essentially, again, a review lesson from before, now just different bases other than 60 and 20. Uh, so let's go back to, to this here and let's write down, just like we had here, positional values. Let's put those back down. This is this is definitely something we want to write down this time because we need to know what are we going to divide by first. Uh, what place, what's the largest number that will still go into the number we have in question. So let's start off by writing our positional values down. The positional values for base 7. We'd start off with your 1 as always and then you have your 7, 7 squared, 7 cubed, 7 to the 4th and so on. And so how does this match up? Well, this would be the same thing as saying, if you put this into a calculator, this becomes 2401. This becomes 343. 7 squared is 49. 7 is 7. And 1 is 1. So we look at our number here, 839. What's the biggest number in this list that we did? We might have to make it bigger if, if there's something else bigger that would still go into there but of this list looks like we don't need to write any more what's the biggest number that divides completely into into that well it would be 343 we wouldn't have to go this high we would just go to there so we start off with 839 and we divide by this one the biggest one that goes into there so our base 7 this should have one two three four places now that we're going to use uh, so this divided by 343 
I'm going to get my calculator out a second. Okay, so I take this, how many whole times does it go into there? So let's just divide that in here, 343. You get two whole times with some left over. So it's going to be two with a remainder. And let's see if you remember from that last lesson, how do we figure that out again? Well, we take 839. And we're going to subtract from that. And let's use our parentheses here. We we're going to have two whole 343s going to there. So I'm going to subtract two times 343. What's left over is the remainder. Let's see what that is. So we have a remainder of 153. So this number right here, this is my positional value that matches up with this one, the 7 or the 343. So that will go with, with that right there. So let's keep working this out, keep working it through. What's going to come next? Well, we take my, my remainder now, just like we had in, in 4.2. Take the remainder, put it down here, divide by the next place value. So we have 153 divided by the next place value is 49. How many whole times does 49 go into there? I can tell that if it was 50, it would be three whole times. This is a little bit less, so three whole times. And I'll take out my calculator. I think I could do this one in my head, but maybe you're not seeing that because this would be three less than 50, and you got three more than 150. So I, I think it's a remainder of six. Let's just verify that here. Uh, so we have 153 minus three groups of 49, and that is six. So minus 147 gives you that, just like I thought. That should be a six there. So this here, now this number is going to be this place value right there. That's the, the third place value. Uh, so from there, let's keep going with that. Take my six and divide it by the next place value. Well, the next place value is seven. You still should write it down. So what's six divided by seven? Does that work? No. So what's zero? What's your remainder? Six. So you have zero with the remainder of six. So let's circle that. This is going to be my second place value. That's going to go in the sevens place, you might say, in base seven. And then, so what's my remainder? It's six. Now on to my, my final place, my ones place, in a, a sense you could say. So this would be six. That would be the, the last place to fill in. So 839 in base seven becomes 2306. So let's write that down. So 839. Oh, if we want to get fancy with it. See if you remember this symbol. This just looks like it looks cooler. You look smarter if you write that. What's that mean again? Therefore, all right. Therefore, 839 in base 10 is 2000 or 2306. Uh, you could say in base 7. And you'll notice this is a kind of a way to check and see if you did things right, or one way to, to verify at least the possibility of it being right. Make sure that your base here, you have no numbers bigger than that base right here in, in your number. So 6, 0, 3, and 2, all less than 7. So that is OK in that regard, too. Uh, let's do another one like that. OK, here's my, my thing. I, would, I think I want to get a t-shirt like this. So I want to get a t-shirt that says that, uh, oh, brought the calculator. I would like to get a t-shirt that says what you saw there. Uh, there are only 10 kinds of people, those who understand binary and those who don't. What the heck are you talking about, Mr. Wagner? There's two kinds of people, aren't there? Uh, let's do an example to, to help you understand. If you ever see anybody wear that t-shirt, after we do this example, you'll be one of the, the, the 10 on the, the other side, I guess you could say. Um, so convert two to base two. Well, you might say it wasn't just, isn't that just two? Because base two has two digits. Oh, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait a second, Mr. I got you, I got you now. Because base two has the only two digits on it are zero and one. We can't put a two in base two. So what are my positional values? Let's write that down again. This is done the same way. Uh, we just have two digits to use now. So let's write down my positional values. Here are we have your one, 
then you've got your 2, and it's powers of 2. 2 squared, 2 cubed. And remember, these are all actually just powers of 2. This is like 2 to the first. This is like 2 to the 0 power. Uh, this keeps going that way. That looks like an R. I don't want that to be an R. That's just a little dot, dot, dot. Okay, there we go. So you could say this, or that would be equivalent to saying 2 to the fourth, 16, 2 cubed, 8, 2 squared, 4, and then 2, and 1. So what are your values? What are your, your place values here? We're going to take my number is 2. So what's the, the largest one of these numbers that divides evenly into 2? You have something that goes in it. Well, it's 2. What's then 2 divided by 2? What do you get? You get it's 1 with a remainder of nothing. No remainder. So a remainder is 0. So hopefully you can see how this is just the same idea, same concept. What was the biggest one here that went into this number? It was 343. So that's what I did. And then I just kept going down and dividing by the next place value until I got to the end. Doing the same thing here. I'm taking 2. I'm dividing it by the biggest one that goes into it, 2. And I'm going to have this. So my remainder is 0. Since it's the last one, I'm going to rewrite that down here. So my this value is that, that one. This digit is that value. And then the next one should be its remainder of 0. So that's going to take the place of my 1's place, you might say. And this is my 2 to the first place, or just 2 place. Uh, so this is my, my final answer. And oh, maybe, maybe, light bulb gone yet? So 2, therefore, 2 equals, ha <laughs> ha, oh, I got you. That is clever. 10 in base 2. This is binary code. This is binary, the binary system. So there's 10 kinds of people that understand this. But in binary, 10 is equal to 2. Clever. Clever, Mr. Wagner. Yeah, that's why I want that t-shirt. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I, I got to give you that t-shirt. Okay. Example seven. Let's check out another one. Let's make the base now. We've done a couple smaller than base ten. Let's do one where it's bigger than base ten. So let's convert one zero zero three to base twelve. So let's start off. Same thought process. And again, this is something you could skip well you wouldn't want to skip this later on I'm, I'm falsely saying that we want to know the positional values for sure when we're doing this division style when we're converting to uh, a different base from base 10 you can leave out the positional values when you're doing this kind of thing when you know okay this is that one this is that one this is matching up that way we can just put it right there without the positional values but we need to know what these positional values are after we take their power. So I need to know, okay, I've got 1, I've got 12, I need to know what 12 squared is, I need to know what 12 cubed is, I need to know what 12 to the fourth is, and so on to be able to, to do this properly. So what is that the same as? I say this or 12 to the fourth is the same as 1, well I don't even have that one on here, so let me get my calculator out. 12 to the fourth, I didn't put that in my notes here, where is the power button? There's my power button, 12 to the fourth power. That's 20,736. Let me just double check that. Yep. Okay, and then 12 to the third, 1,728. So I didn't even have that in my notes, so I didn't really need to write 12 to the fourth, but I've got it in here, so I'll just keep it in there. So 12 squared, that's 144, and then I have the 12 and the 1. So all these matching up like you see there. And now let's see, what's the biggest number, biggest value in this list that divides completely into that? I would say it's the 104, or the 144 right there would divide completely into that. 1728, that's too big. Uh, so let's now work that through. So I have 1003, and 144 will go into that. So divide it by 144. You have 6 when you do that. So. I'll just tell you that I, I worked this out before. 6 with a remainder of, okay, so you take 1,003, 
You subtract 6 times 144 from that, you're left with a remainder of 139. I would recommend you take a calculator yourself and just verify that that's what you get to. See that you get the same thing. But save ourselves a little bit of time here. I'm going to tell you that's what it was. And so we have 6, remainder 139. I'm going to take this now and take 139 divided by the next place value, divided by 12. How many whole times does 12 go into 139? Well, I worked that out. <clears throat> I got 11. And I got a remainder of 7. Again, use your calculator to, to verify that that is true. See that you can do that. So this is my next place value. That goes in the, the 12's place, you might say. This would, the 6 goes in the 144's or the 12 squared place. And then the last one here, this is my last place, a 7. So I can just write that down as my final number, my final place value. So, or, haha, -ha, therefore, getting fancy, therefore 1003 equals 6117 base 12. Mr. Wagner, I am disappointed in you right now. Why? I did it right, right? What did I do wrong? I don't understand what you're talking about. Why am I berating myself here? Why am, am I uh, getting out of my own case? What it is, what's, what's going on here? This is not a single digit. This is two digits. I'm supposed to represent this place, the 12's place, by a single digit. So what did we call that, again, in our duodecimal system, in our base 12 system? That was, passed it there, the T for 10, the E for 11. So the 11 should be instead here, I should write, let's erase the 11 and put an E in that place there. So now I have the three digits like I should. <clears throat> so 6E7. That would be my final answer. So be careful with that. If you have double digits in a single place, you got to replace it with the symbol that represents that, that value. Uh, so let's do a couple more here and do in base 16. We have not seen base 16 yet, so I want to see how that looks. So let's say we convert. I'm going to use the same number, 1003 to base 16. So what do we need? We need our positional values. We need to know what those are. Let's write those out. And what are they? We've got 1, we've got 16 now, we've got 16 squared, 16 cubed, and 16 to the fourth, and so on. So I'll write all that down here. And that would be the same as, you could say, or 16 to the fourth ends up being 65,536. 16 cubed is 4,096. Uh, 16 squared, 256, then 16, then 1. Let me make that ugly looking comma look a little better. That's a little better. Okay, and so what do we have from there? What's the largest number in this list that goes into 1003? It would be this number right here, the 256. So I'm going to take that, start with 1003, divide it by the 256. So that's my 16 squared place. So I'm only going to have three digits. That's how many I should have. Divide it by 256, and you get three with a remainder of 235. And again, I'm not showing you this anymore. I want you to take your calculator and verify that you get the same thing there. <coughs> get your practice doing that. So you have a three a remainder of 235. All right. So what goes down here? 235. I'm going to divide that by the next thing, 16. How many whole times does 16 go into 235? If you work that out, you get 14. You get a remainder of 11. So 14 comes next. I did those two places. Now I just have my ones place. In a sense, so what goes in the, the ones place? The final number 11 goes in that place. So this is my, my final thing there. So I have... 
Yeah, therefore, 1003 equals in base 16, 31411. Mr. Wagner. You did it again. You did it again. Really? 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 Why are you so mad at me? I don't understand. Explain to me. Oh. Oh. Okay. What's wrong here? I have two digits going in place of what's supposed to be one digit. So I'm only supposed to have three digits. So how on earth are we supposed to represent 14 in this hexadecimal system. Uh, how are we supposed to do that? Or hexa, hexadecimal system. Sorry, I'm thinking base 60. All right there. Kind of combine those. Hexadecimal system. What does that look like? So we didn't write this down before. Let's write this down now. I'll use red. So base 16 digits. What do they look like? Base 16 digits. There's a, a certain way that a certain normal system we use or normal set of digits we use for that so instead of writing the whole thing back again it uses 0 through 9 but then what comes next instead of the T for 10 and E for 11 because then you have a, you have another T for 12 that starts to not make as much sense to use that so if you have a hexadecimal system you actually use the letters it's just the way we we do things or we chose to do things this way use the letters A through F so this is 10 digits right here 0 through 9 and then it's six more digits right here. And so let me give these little labels underneath. So A is 11. B represents 12. C is 13. D is 14. E is 15. And I totally screwed that up. <laughs> let me go back. I can't have 16 as a digit in a base 16 system. It always has to be one less. So I purposely made that mistake. Right? You didn't. Right? I did. Okay? That was on purpose. Yeah. Uh-huh. Stop. Stop talking to yourself. But I'm the only one here. Who else am I supposed to talk to? Uh, so this is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There we go. So now, oh, come on. That looks like a 6. Let me erase that last one. 15. There we go. And so what should I put here for the next one? 14 in the hexadecimal system represented with an E and 11 represented with a B. So there we go. Now I've got three digits in a sense, three symbols uh, representing my three place values there. So 3EB in base 16 is the same as 1003 in base 10. And let's do one more here. We're going to go back to kind of what we started with and see if you remember how that way works now to convert Huh? Convert face base 16 to base 10? Is that possible? We have all letters. What? I'm supposed to convert that to a number? Yeah. Yeah. Look. Look right here. You've got all those things here. So I have F, A, C, and E represented 15, 10, 12, and 14. So you bet I can do that. That shouldn't be too hard at all. So we're going to convert some faces here. This picture is a little freaky, but this person decided they wanted to convert their face. This is how I feel about that picture. I'm not so sure I like that picture. Um, that's, yeah, that's a little disturbing. But we're going to convert face to base 10. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to go like this, but I'm doing it now. So you convert, no, no, you're not going to convert your face. Don't, don't try to do this. Do not do this at home. Do not try that at home. Uh, that's going to hurt. So this, let's just use numbers instead of pulling our face off. Uh, positional values are, what are they in base 16? I'm going to write those over here this time. So the positional values would look like, like this. You've got, let's work our way backwards, 1, 16, 16 squared, just like before, 16 cubed, and so on. And that would be the same thing as 4096, 256, 16, and 1. And so what's matching up with what? Let me rewrite face down here. So F A C 
and E in base 16. So this matches up with the the ones place. The C matches up with the 16's place, or the 16 to the first power place. The A with the 16 to the second power place. 16 squared, and then this one with the 16 cubed place. So how do I work this out again? What does that look like? Remember, this just equals, take that first one, times this, times the 16 cubed, or 40, 96. We can think of it like that. So F represented 15, or was representing 15, so 15 times 40, 96. You could say 15 times 16 cubed. You could write it that way, too. That would be fine. And you've got the next one. You've got A is, I forgot, let's go back here, 10. And remember, C is 12, E is 14. I'm just going in order like that. So I have A being 10, 10 times 256. For the next one, we've got C being 12, and 12 times 16 is that next one. And the last one we've got E was 14, 14 times 1. So now we just put this stuff into a calculator, and work this out, you're going to get 61, 440. This next one becomes, just add a zero to that, it's multiplied by zero, 2560. This one, 12 times 16, that's 192, and 14 times 1, 14. Work this all out, add it all together, and you get 60,000, 64,000, excuse me, 206 in base 10. All right, so again, that was essentially a review lesson, just using some different bases. So we saw the ba Babylonians using their base 60 system. We saw the Mayans using their base 20, more or less system with a weird 18 thrown in there. And then now we're, we're using base 16, base 12, any old base we want, really. Uh, but especially focusing our attention on some of the, the bases where computers are utilizing those bases. Hopefully you found that helpful. And let me know in class if you have any questions. I, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. And I will see you guys very soon in class.